Hey, gym philosopher. What? What is the topic of today's show? Oh, it's lactic acid. Who? That's hot. Enjoy. Hey, what's up, Peripatetics? Max Gaines here once again, dropping knowledge on you about fitness, health, weights, supplements, and the human body, using that distinct branch of philosophy known as gym philosophy. I'm joined via Skype today with the legend of stoicism, Epictetus. How you living, Epictetus? Yo, Max, I just did 405 for seven on the incline bench. Wow, that's pretty good. You must be pumped. You cannot find the pump in externalities. You can only find the pump from within yourself. Ah, there you go. I'm getting all stoic on me again. How you feeling? My triceps are on fire, man. Oh, funny you should say that, because that's the topic of today's show. Triceps? No, lactic acid burn. All right, let's do this. I feel that the first thing that we need to discuss in order to comprehend lactic acid is to get a solid understanding of what aerobic exercise is and what anaerobic exercise is. So to start, the body prefers to generate most of its energy through an aerobic process. Aerobic meaning with air and air meaning oxygen. Uh, actually, a more precise definition is that aerobic exercises uses oxygen and only oxygen to meet all the energy needs of its particular activity that's performing. This is generally light to moderately intense exercise such as running or swimming or walking or cycling. Uh, in gym terms, steady state cardio. Uh, this aerobic energy is utilized during a prolonged exercise period of at least three to four minutes. So that's generally when you're on the treadmill running for 30 minutes or the bike for 45 minutes or so on. Um, another aspect of aerobic exercise is that it involves primarily the type one muscle fibers or the slow twitch muscle fibers. Now I'm not going to get into the different types of muscle fibers on this show, but I will on another show. Now into anaerobic exercise. Anaerobic means without air or without oxygen, as is indicated with the prefix an. Anaerobic exercise comes into play when the supply of oxygen to the muscles can't keep up with the body's demand for energy. This demand for a large amount of energy is driven by intense exercise such as weight training or sprinting. It's these high bursts of energy that kickstart the production of lactate or lactic acid. Now, you're not going to actually start feeling the burning sensation until enough lactate has sufficiently built up in the muscle. It takes about 15 to 20 seconds of strenuous exercise in most people before their muscles start to fry. If you've ever done volume training, you know that is a lactic acid factory. But you don't even need to do high repetitions, since when we refer to stressing the muscles, we mean time under tension, or tut. Just doing as little as one slow concentrated repetition where the muscle is tense past that 15 to 20 second barrier could cause lactic acid buildup. Look at rock climbers. Pulling the entire weight of your body up a rock face induces an insane burn. That's why the smart rock climbers use ropes and their legs to minimize the time that their arm muscles are under tension. I'll also mention that anaerobic exercise uses primarily type two muscle fibers or the fast twitch muscle fibers. And it's those fibers that grow in size due to hypertrophy. So if you wanna smash your back and make it huge, if you want a giant chest, if you want massive legs, do anaerobic exercises. And now we venture into what lactic acid is. It's colorless as a liquid, it's white in its solid state, and it's water soluble. Uh, that's real nice to know, but what is its purpose? Ah, spoken like a true philosopher. Well, the body's purpose in producing lactic acid is to keep supplying the muscles with energy when the cardiovascular system can't keep up with the demand for oxygen, as we just discussed through an anaerobic process. During heavy exertion, when lactate is produced in the muscle cells, that abundance of lactate increases the acidity of the muscle cells. The normal process of energy production performs very poorly in a highly acidic environment. Therefore, once in this environment, 
the body rapidly makes it impossible to continue exercise any longer. I guess you could say that the purpose of lactic acid is the self-defense mechanism of the body that keeps you from severely injuring your muscles. I kind of think of it like your intense exercise is like driving a car towards the edge of a cliff and that your body uses lactic acid to put on the brakes before you pull a Thelma and Louise off that sucker. Excellent. Now let's see a flow chart. Oh, okay. I will explain the process with the flow chart, but I don't want to get too deep into the scientific weeds for fear of losing some people. So please bear with me. I have AIDS. Visual aids that I think are really going to help people understand the process of lactic acid generation. So here goes. Again, this is just a simplified chart to show the basic concepts going on. There's a lot of biochemistry happening in each one of these steps that isn't shown, but basic concepts are all that we are really interested in here. As you can see, the chart is titled Aerobic and Anaerobic Energy Generation. And that's because the anaerobic process of energy generation is intertwined with the aerobic process. And we'll show that in a second. We begin with our raw source of energy for the body, which is glucose. Now, glucose is formed from the foods that we eat in our diet. It's mostly from carbohydrates, but can also be from proteins and fats if there aren't enough carbohydrates in your body from which to pull. And that process of converting proteins and fats into glucose is called gluconeogenesis, and that's done by the liver. The first stage of aerobic energy generation is converting the glucose into a substance called pyruvate, and that is through a metabolic process called glycolysis. When there is enough oxygen present in the blood, the pyruvate is then converted into adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, through aerobic respiration. ATP is the main energy source used by the body. As we stated earlier, this is the aerobic energy used during light to moderate exercise. This process continues until there is a deficit of oxygen sourced. Once the available oxygen level wanes, the pyruvate begins to produce lactate through the process of fermentation. And it does this using an enzyme called LDH, or lactate dehydrogenase. This process begins at approximately 15 seconds of high intensity exercise, although the timing varies among individuals. ATP generated from the anaerobic respiration process of fermentation produces much less ATP energy than aerobic respiration. The ratio is something like, for every 38 ATP generated through aerobic respiration, only two ATP are generated for anaerobic respiration. So aerobic is much more efficient. The lactate concentration in the muscle will increase as long as the lactate production exceeds lactate removal. So here comes the burn. The lactic acid buildup will continue for one to three minutes where it will reach a crescendo and the muscle will have to shut down. Most people aren't going to make it past that one minute, let alone three minutes. Saving grace is the arrival of more oxygen. <laughs> lactate removal from the muscle cell is accomplished by the lactate combining with oxygen to turn back into pyruvate, where it proceeds to form ATP through the aerobic process. And that's how it's done, son. That brings us to how to prevent lactic acid buildup, or how to treat it once it happens. Look, I understand. Most people don't like pain. And the pain that you experience while working out is what keeps most people out of the gym. Now I'm a freak and I eat up the pain and the dizziness and the lack of coordination. I don't like cardio, but I love to smash it up and get wasted with free weights. But for those of a different mindset, here's a little advice on how to avoid lactic acid buildup while working out. If you want to minimize the lactic acid burn, then you would do lower repetitions so that your time under tension doesn't go past that 15 to 20 second wall that we talked about earlier. Either that or use lighter weights that aren't going to require as much strain to perform the movements. Remember though, low reps will get you stronger. But in my experience, you won't grow the muscle unless you do higher reps. I find somewhere between eight to 12 repetitions is a good range for growth. And personally, I've seen even better results with even higher repetitions through volume training. Okay, your muscles are now on fire. What can you do? Well, once you do get that lactic acid burn, the best thing that you can do 
is to step away from the gym equipment and just walk around a little bit while taking some deep breaths. Stay around your equipment because you don't want someone ganking your weights. Just shake it out and breathe. Remember, we said that lactic acid is generated from a lack of oxygen. So a few deep breaths will allow the lactate to convert back to pyruvate. Also, walking around a little bit will help that oxygen-rich blood circulate and flow back to the muscle cell to facilitate this. Okay, here's where the philosophy comes in. Yes! I try to think of the positives of lactic acid in the following ways. First, you know that you're actually working the muscle and breaking it down. Now, I am of a philosophy that after a workout, you should be able to feel something in the muscles that you worked that day, whether it be soreness or a pump. During the workout, lactic acid gives a good sort of biofeedback to let you know that you're working out hard enough. I think it was the philosopher Pythagoras who said, no pain, no gain. Nope. Well, I don't know. We'll ask him next time we have him on the show. Number two positive. You can actually feel the muscles that you are working during an exercise and determine how correct your form is. Anecdote. Like the other day I was at the Lyceum gym, smashing back, and I was doing lat pull downs, but I was feeling the burn in my posterior deltoids and not my lats. Now that let me know I had crappy form. So as a result, I lowered the weight so that I could properly target the muscles that I was intending to exercise. So the next time you get that burn while you're working out, and I hope you get that burn, you'll be able to understand better what's happening and then determine for yourself how you're gonna to react to that. So there, I leave you on a positive note. Two positive notes, actually. So there's the information. Feel free to develop your own philosophy around that information. And if that information improved your life in any way, feel free to drop a like, subscribe, share. You know the YouTube dance. So that's it for me with lactic acid, and hey, guess what? Now you know something. Ooh, that's hot.